Over a million people live in Dublin, but very few will ever see the coast from a fisherman's point of view. Today I'm getting the opportunity to see the beauty of the South Dublin coastline from a yacht and perhaps even catch a glimpse of Bono's new immigrant neighbours, the dolphins of Killiney Bay. But first up is the Ice House Fish Shop at the end of Dunleary's Coal Harbour Pier. We're going to need lunch. Morning ladies. Morning. What can you recommend for me today? Smoked and special today. Sounds special, fantastic. <laughs> where was it caught? You know, where was it from? Oh, okay, fresh. Yeah. Right, right, In the water by the shop are a family of seals who only appear for food begging when the shop's open. These guys are picky. They won't even move for leftovers. Only the best fillets will do. But with the price of monkfish, they're not getting any of our lunch. Forecast for calls from Mallon Head to Wicklow Head to Mizzen Head and the Irish Sea. Wind up very well. Today okay. we're taking a day trip with Go Sailing on their luxury 54 foot yacht moored in Dunleary Marina. Patches of mist and drizzle mainly along Atlantic seaboards becoming mostly fair. Uh, it looks good. We have a uh, lovely southwesterly wind, uh, around uh, 14, 16 knots, uh, which is perfect for sailing. It's off the land, so we'll have nice flat water. So, yeah, it's a really good day for it. Leaving the Pigeon House Towers behind, we head south. The Pigeon House was so called because a man named Pigeon lived there in a wooden house in the mid 1700s. Ships would take shelter off Mr. Pigeon's house in stormy weather. We're going to drive the boat now, uh, which means we're going to turn uh, through the wind facing away from it. So we're actually going to turn to our right-hand side, to our starboard side, and head out towards uh, the island in Dockey Sound now. So uh, when we drive, the, the breeze is going to switch sides from uh, the left-hand side of the sail to the right-hand side quite suddenly. So you'll hear a bit of a bang and a bit of a rattle. That's perfectly normal. So here we go. There we go. Passing the 40-foot bathing place, you can see a battlement which isn't easily visible from land. And that's how the 40-foot gets its name. It was home to the 40th Foot Regiment. Nothing at all to do with the depth of the water or the height of the waves. Coming into Dorky Sound, the wind dies down and it's plain sailing. Erin offers me the chance to steer half a million euros worth of boat. With rocks out left, glad he's so trusting. So a couple of things to bear in mind here when you're actually uh, steering the boat. It's, it's, it's a big boat, it's over 24, 25 tonnes. So it's, you gotta just bear in mind, you are dealing with something the same weight as a lorry, you know, it's, um, but it is very, very responsive. So when you are making alterations to the course, you only need to go a couple of inches at a time. Very, very small movements, gentle movements. And, you'll, and if you, you always look forward when you've, when you've made the adjustment, and see what effect it's had on our heading. So we're going straight down the middle of the sound here. A nice uh, straight line, so go and ha have a go. What could possibly go wrong? There are rocks there <laughs> over on the left-hand side, though. Lots could yeah. possibly <laughs> go wrong. <laughs> While I keep my eyes straight ahead, you can look over at Dawkey Island, inhabited as far back as 6,000 years ago. More recently in Napoleonic times, a Martello Tower was built to act as a lookout for possible French invaders. Anyway, time for lunch. The cabin boy looks after things down below decks. In the galley, it's freshly fried monkfish paninis for lunch. In the old days, if there was a shipwreck, the cabin boy could find himself served up as lunch to starving crew. But in 1884, in a landmark case called the Queen vs Dudley and Stevens, the British courts ruled that it was not OK to eat the cabin boy under any circumstances. It's a bit tricky sometimes walking in such <laughs> cramped spaces. <laughs> and cabin boys everywhere rejoiced. That's really, really good. We're now in Killiney Bay. This is where we might just get to see a group of dolphins that have taken up residence here. The chances of seeing the dolphins, uh, we never promise because they are wild animals. It's a, it's a big bay out here, so they will be feeding and playing elsewhere. So they could be quite close to us and we mightn't see them. But if they are around, more than likely they will come over to join us for a play. Breffany then scans the water for fins. A few minutes later, we get lucky. Dolphins on the starboard bow. Okay. There. There? Yeah, I see it. Yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah. Wow. They Fantastic. are so beautiful. There's three of them there now in a row. 
Well, there's a, there's two adults and, and, and it's not quite a baby anymore, but uh, it's grown up now. That's the family unit that have been here now for two years. He's flipped. That's <laughs> fantastic. I've never seen anything like that before. It looks like they're fishing at the moment, and that's when you see them jumping. They'll generally be jumping up out of the water and, and landing back, because two of the dolphins will probably be corralling the fish to the surface, and then the one that comes that breaks the surface has just come up through the fish and has taken a fish and is landing back into the water. So sometimes people think they're playing when they're doing that, but that's them fishing. So as you see, they come over and kind of say hello to us, and then they'll head off again to go fishing. It's a beautiful sight as the dolphins track along beside us. Heading back round Dawkey Island, we see the Muglins Rocks, where many a ship has foundered. Centuries ago, it was a, a thing that caused a lot of shipwrecks over 12 or 13. There was a survey done uh, back in the 1700s, and they reckoned that it was, it was causing a lot of shipwrecks. So that's why they put a, an individual beacon on it. It was also uh, more infamous as a place where the last hangings of pirates were staged. Um, when to deter other pirates, they would hang them on the gallows and leave them hanging on the Muglins for other pirates to be able to look at and go, hmm, maybe not a good spot to drop by. There's a bit of controversy about what lies beneath us out here. Providence Resources have recently been given a licence to drill for oil and gas. They reckon there's a 20% chance of success and they're calling it the Dawkey Island Prospect. I think the site they're talking about is actually around six kilometres uh, east of the island, uh, so it's out. It's a similar sort of distance away as the, as the Kish Lighthouse itself. It's on the, the southern end of that same bank. Uh, we have two sandbanks here running north and south, the Kish with the lighthouse on it and the Burford, which is just inside that. I would hate to see uh, any of the, uh, the kind of the uh, natural spectacle we have here. I'd hate to see any of that actually uh, spoiled in any way. Out here in the bay, you feel alive. This is the life. You've seen today, it, it, you can just take in so much. You know, you have your, the dolphins made a, a, a trip even better by their little show and their jumping and stuff. But apart from that, it is, it is a fantastic place. It is a, you know, Dublin Bay, this is the sort of, this is the part of Dublin that people don't see enough of. And it is fantastic. I mean, even on a day where some people might say, oh, it's a bit chilly or a bit windy or something like that, it is still just unbelievable.